How's it going everybody? In this video, I'm going to be comparing the Trezor 1 versus the Trezor Model T. I'll explain all of the differences between these two hardware wallets, and after watching this video, you'll be able to decide which hardware wallet is the best choice for you. Now, I've owned the Trezor 1 for several years now and have recently upgraded to the Model T. So, I'm going to be sharing all of my experience owning both of these wallets with you guys. I think both hardware wallets are great, but depending on what your needs are, one is likely a better choice than the other for your specific circumstances. Now I'm going to be including a link to the official Trezor store in the description of this video. This will allow you to get the best price on either the Trezor 1 or the Trezor Model T, whichever model you decide to buy. Now it's worth mentioning that you're going to want to use that link and shop from the official Trezor store only when buying these products. I've heard of many horror stories where people have bought quote unquote Trezor products from Amazon or other stores and they received a fake or tan tampered with Trezor and they ended up losing all of their crypto holdings. So I really cannot stress that enough. Use the link in the description to go to the official Trezor store. You'll also get a bit of a discount on your purchase for using that link. Now let's break down these wallets against one another. Now the first main difference between the Trezor Model 1 and the Trezor Model T, if you can see by this picture here, is the Trezor Model T has a bigger display. They've actually included a touchscreen interface which allows you to use the Trezor a lot easier than the Model 1. The Model 1, basically you have to use your computer. There's two buttons on the actual Model 1 as you can see here, but you do have to use your computer to, to really do anything. But And also logging into the actual Trezor 1 is a little bit more annoying because it is an analog screen. With the actual Trezor Model T, you can just log in using the touch screen. You don't have to use your computer to actually control the device. Now the next main difference is the coins and tokens that are supported. Now the Trezor 1 does allow for most cryptocurrencies. However, there is some pretty significant coins missing, namely Cardano, Ripple, Monero, EOS, Tezos. These are just a few. I actually have a full list of all of the different coins here. Uh, I can include the link in the description to this as well. It's on the Trezor website and basically you'll be able to see all of the different coins. Most of them are available on both as you can see, but some main notable figures, i.e. Cardano, Ripple, Tezos, and Monero, and also EOS are missing. So that is well worth mentioning. I'm a huge fan of Cardano, as many of you guys probably know. So the Model T was a very necessary upgrade for myself. I also have quite a bit of Ripple as well. So the Model T for me was pretty necessary after I wanted to get these two main holdings off of exchanges, which I definitely recommend you do as well. Not your keys, not your crypto. So the next main difference is the Shamir backup. Now, many of you probably don't understand what this is. I didn't either until I looked into it. Basically, um, you can watch this video on the Trezor website that explains it. But essentially, the way that this works is it allows you to have multiple recovery seeds as opposed to just one. So this is ideal for people if you, let's say your crypto is shared with you and a spouse or you want to have multiple keys to unlock your device as opposed to just having one paper recovery seed phrase. If you want to have multiple and then you can unlock it with a certain number of those shares. I'm basically doing a terrible job of explaining it. You should just check it out on their website and watch this video if you really want to know what it is. But for me, this is actually cool because I actually have a business with a couple business partners and we are using the Trezor Model T to split up the earnings of the business because it allows you to have multiple keys to unlock the actual device. So if any one of us wants to take the crypto out, we need the other people's keys to do so. So it's a pretty cool feature and worth mentioning for some people. This right here, the FIDO2 authentication, this is just a very fancy way of basically saying that you can use your Trezor device as an authenticator to actually log in to access your coins. So this is just one more layer of security as well as the Shamir backup. That's one thing worth mentioning mentioning with the Model T is it's definitely a lot more secure than the Trezor 1 because with the Shamir backup, it allows you to have a 20 or 33 word recovery phrase versus the 12, 18 or 24 available with the single backup. And then also with the FIDO2 authentication, allowing you to only log in and access your funds with the actual physical Model T. It just adds another layer of security to holding your coins, which I really like. Now, the next thing here, pretty self-explanatory, a micro SD card, the Model T has one and the Trezor 1 does not not, so that's pretty straightforward. The main difference, in my opinion, is the price. The Model 1 is only 50 euros or 49 euros, and the Model T is 160 or 159 euros. So the Trezor Model T is significantly more expensive. That being said, if you're a long-term holder like myself, you have a significant amount of crypto assets, you care about security, and you are long-term with your crypto holdings, for me, the Model T was a no-brainer. When I really thought it through, it really was the obvious 
choice. I love the touch screen interface. I can't tell you how much easier it is to use than the actual Model 1. The Model 1 is great. If you are just somebody that wants to get your coins off the exchanges, you don't have a bunch of money just laying around to throw um, at a new hardware wallet. If you don't necessarily care about having the latest and greatest hardware wallet by Trezor, and if you don't care about holding Cardano, Ripple, EOS, Monero, or Tezos, or any of the other coins listed on the Trezor website, then the Model 1 is more than sufficient. Like I said, I had a Model 1 for several years, and I, I haven't had any problems with it. The only thing that I will say is kind of annoying is there's only two buttons on it, and so, I mean, logging in isn't as easy as with the Model T, but to be honest, I wasn't annoyed with it until I started using the Model T. Because the Model T is a lot easier and most of you if you've never used the Model T You're not even gonna know how much easier it is than the Model 1 which is probably fine for most people So again, if you want to buy either of these products be sure to use the link in the description It's gonna save you a significant chunk of coin and also you're gonna be shopping on the official Trezor website So you don't have to worry about anything Do not shop at any retailer that is not Trezor if you are going to buy either of these, these hardware wallets That's about it guys like the video comment and subscribe and I hope to see all of you guys in the next video Thank you.